Well, hello, everyone. I'm Sean Cheek, and welcome to WebPianoTeacher.com. We're doing another theory lesson today. Guys, I like to use real songs to teach theory because it just can get so boring trying to read those books and doing the quizzes, you know, and those of you who are in theory class at school makes it so difficult. Or if you just want to understand for yourself for playing, um, I love using real music to do that. So let's look at what we're doing today. All right, this is a real song. And uh, you old timers have probably heard this. Maybe even if you're a young timer. Let's see. You know, Crystal Gale. Ba ba ba. So great song. Don't it make my brown eyes blue? So. <laughs> We're going to look at the theory in this. So you'll kind of learn the song as well as we're doing this, but you're going to learn the music theory behind it. Now, theory just means the language of music, how chords fit together, how certain chords work within a key, okay? And after you start understanding those things, it starts to make sense and the lights start to go on. As you start putting things together and you go, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Now, you're not going to get it all at once. You have to give it time, okay? So let yourself absorb these theory lessons a little at a time. And after a while, it's going to start making sense. But you have to give it a chance and have fun while you're doing it while, play, while playing a fun song. All right, so as we look at this, we have a lot of flats in here, okay? So I'm going to show you a little trick right off the bat. This song is in G flat, but I'm going to take away all the flats and just play all naturals. That will work for a lot of things unless you have some accidentals in the middle of it, but mostly it, it can kind of work for most stuff. Just take the flats out, and then we have this. So we're going to start without the flats because I want to, sh to show you how easy it is to understand flats, okay, when we understand that how it works when the flats aren't there, okay? Now, you can run into some more trouble sometimes when you, when you have uh, flats and you're trying to just take them all out and play it in the key of G instead, but it'll work for, for a lot of things. It will work here for this first part, okay? So I'm just going to look at these notes as if there's no flats on them. G, B, D, E, left hand on a G, okay? Now, the first part of this song, you can play right along. In fact, most of the song are four chords, you know? It makes me think of that guy, uh, you know, four chords! <laughs> the guy with the English accent, and he's just four chords, so many songs with four chords. That is true. And a lot of songs you can get, get by just playing these four chords. A lot of songs just have three chords, okay? So, but it's a repeated pattern, and you can play along with the song. If you can find the recording, pull it up. It's so easy these days, right? YouTube or... What people use Spotify or, or I use Apple Music. I like the, the subscription to have anything I want to listen to. I can pull it up so you can play along with the recording. That's fun. If you've never done that, that'll really help you in your playing something that's sort of easy. That has a repeated chord pattern. Play along with it. It's just really nice to have that that going and you really feel like you're part of the band. OK, so as we get into it. We've already established here no flats for a while. And then I'm going to show you a really neat thing at the end that will make sense where flats come from, why they, you know, why you have the key of G flat. All right, so no flats. And I'm going to just look at this part. Now, this part up here when I played, that's the piano part that's on top. We're not going to look at that little piano top part on top, okay? We're going to look at these chords on the bottom. This actually is from a lesson that I do on the website where I teach the whole song all the way through. But I'm using it to teach you some theory, okay? So that's what this is from. And uh, we're just looking at these chords in the right hand for the chord progression, for the theory part of it. If I see G on the bass. I'm, I'm already going to tell you we're doing it in the key of G here. Okay, so G is one. That's the first thing you have to establish when you're looking at the analysis of a song is what key is it in. Most of the time, the very first chord in the bass note will be the key it's in, but not always, but man, lots of times, okay? That's your, that's your uh, little clue there is look at the first chord, see what the bass note is, and that's usually going to be the key it's in. You can also look at the end of the song. It'll be the same thing. You have the that chord and that bass note's going to be 
the key that it's in. Now, some songs repeat ad lib and fade, and they fade out, and so you don't have an ending chord. But, you know, as a general rule, you can use that to get started. So we have G chord. Do you know what letters are in a G chord? Okay. I hope you know that G, B, D is a G chord. We can find G on the piano and then just go skip a letter, B, skip a letter, D. All right, G, A, B, C, D. Those are those notes there. There's only seven letters on the piano. Did you know that? Seven letters in music. We can put flats and sharps on them, but <laughs> there's only seven letters. So G, B, D is a chord. Okay. So as you're looking at that, can you see G, B, D? And by the way, my notation style is just like staff. You have a treble in a staff. I just write the names of the notes instead of the note heads for people who have trouble reading music. So I've just done that forever. All right, GPD. Now, where's that E? Where's that E doing in there? What's going on there? Okay, that's called an add six. We talked about this in the last theory lesson when we did uh, White Christmas. But you just take a regular chord and you add six, and it gives it kind of that jazzy feel. You just know. Okay, so why is it called add six? Because you count up whatever chord you're on, you take that letter and you count that first letter and you go six, six of them. G, A, B, C, D, E, that's six. I'm adding an E and that's why you call it an add six because it's six above the root note of that chord. Okay, so what chord am I doing? I'm doing a G chord, so G is my starting place. If I had a C chord, C would be my starting place, and I'd count up from that. And then after you do them for a while, you just, realize, you just know, oh, G, G add 6 has an E in it because you remember it. That eventually will start happening for you. So the first chord is a G add 6, which is a 1 chord in the key of G. Okay? And so that's a nice little sound, isn't it? Now, could I put the E somewhere else? Could I do it this way? You sure can. It's still a G add six. Now I'm gonna look at the next chord. That's my my one chord in the key of G. Even though it's got, even though it's a G add six, it's a one chord, a capital one, Roman numeral one, because G is my home base. So I'm gonna say it's a one chord in the key of G. Now let me ask you this: If I were in a different key, would G be one? No, G is only the one chord in the key of G. That's my home base. If I'm in the key of C, C is my home base. C is the one chord. If I'm in the key of F, F's my F chord. F's my one chord. Okay? All right, because you could, we could do these Roman numerals here for the functions of the chords and plug them in to any key we want, and they will work. Okay, that's why it's important to know the function of the chord, the Roman numeral of it. Some people call it the Nashville numbering system, but, man, that's been around way before Nashville. Okay? <laughs> I don't know why we call it that, but... It's just numbering the chords, and, you know, Bach was doing it in, uh, way back in the 1700s. All right, G, B, D, E. Then we go to, remember, we're leaving out the flats for now. We're going to plug them in in a little bit. E is the bass note. B, D, G is the right hand. That's a, an E minor 7, okay? I just told you what the chord was, but you see what looks like a G chord on top. But if you have a chord on top and you go, oh, I know that's a G chord, and then you can't make sense of the bass note, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, it's a minor 7 chord. So you take that bass note and say, oh, if I made a minor chord there, would it work out? Let's see if it does. There's an E. So if, I had, if it was E minor 7, the chord would be E, G, B, and the D would be the 7th. Why is it called a 7th? Because it's a 7, seven away from the root note of that chord. Not of the key you're in, of the chord we're on that we're talking about. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. There it is. So it's an E minor 7. There's the E minor part. There's the 7. But when you look like it, look at it, it looks like a G chord over an E bass. And you know it really is, you know? An E minor 7 is like a mixture of an E minor chord and a G chord because they share two notes. You get that sound. So what is the Roman numeral here? 1. And then we go to... What's E minor in the key of G? Okay. Now, I know a lot of you know that's an E minor chord. That's a G chord. I can do that. You're playing guitar or whatever. But how do they function with each other in the key of G? If G is 1, what is E? All you got to do is count in your mind. Start on G. G is 1. A, B, C, D, E. 6. And uh, uh, in a... In a major key, the sixth chord is always minor. It is. 
The one chord is always major. The sixth chord is minor, unless we you know, do something weird with it, jazzy. But it's a minor chord, so it's a minor six. Okay, so one to minor six sounds pretty cool. Now, why does that help you know? Why does that help you to know that? Because if I want to go one to minor six in another key, I can also do. I could do it in the key of C. One. That's the same thing. I went a C chord to a minor because C major and A minor seven have the chord functions of one to. Minor, um, to minor six, just like one to minor six in the key of G. They have the same Roman numerals, even though the chords are different because I'm in a different key, but they have the same function. Okay? So and you may go, and I don't really get that yet. Hang on, you will. You will. Just keep tracking with me. E, so one six. One add six to uh, a... Uh, Minor six seven chord because it's it's a six chord because we're in the key of G one two three four five six and it's a seven so you say you put a little Roman numeral six you know what that looks like a lowercase Roman numeral like you're doing an outline Roman numeral six lowercase and then put a little seven next to it that makes it a minor six seven chord okay it'd be it'd be a little V and then two lowercase I's and then a, ro a seven an actual you know, like you were a math, <laughs> doing math, the number seven there next to it. So one, six, minor six, like that. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Okay. Now I hope, I hope that whenever you uh, go and play another song and you have a G, B, D and you have an E in there, you go, oh, that, I know what that was. Sean told us it was a. Uh, in the key of G, it's a uh, G6, G add 6. Yes, <laughs> it is, because you'll start seeing these chords again in these patterns. That's when it starts to make sense, when you start recognizing the patterns, okay? You're not just wandering around aimlessly. Stuff starts to make sense after you see it again and again and again. But you have to actually practice and play some music before it can start making sense to you that way. All right, so what do we got here? So we have an A. E, G, C. If you just look at the right hand, what does that look like? It's an E, a G, and a C. Who knows what chord that is? All right, what chord has those three letters? You can't just look at the bass note. A lot of people just say, oh, that's the lowest, the lowest note. E must be an E chord. No, it's only the lowest note when you have it in root position, when you, when you uh, unmix the order of the notes so that they look like this. Now I have, I can see, it's a C, E, G chord. Any combination of EGC is a C chord. And you'll learn to unmix the chord in your mind to know what the name of it is after you're playing for a while. That's a C chord. A on the bass. Now, what did I say before when you have like a chord on top and then a note that doesn't really fit in the chord on the bass? It's probably a, some sort of minor seven chord. And it is. If I just take A, remember we're not doing the flats, and I do A minor, A, C, E. And then I add a seventh to that chord. Now it's a seventh away from the A because I'm looking at this chord. A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I get a G. But you see how chords are built in thirds? Root, third, fifth, seventh. A minor seven. And there it is. I got one more chord to finish with. It's a really cool chord. But let's do the ones we have so far. Uh, one, minor six. What's an A chord in the key of G? Okay, so you're in the key of G. What's an A minor 7? Um, so G is 1. So what's A? It's the very next letter. It's a minor 2. So if we looked at the chord progression so far, we'd have 1, minor 6, minor 2. Very common chord progression. 1, minor 6, minor 2. 1, minor 6, minor 2. Now, I didn't say the seven just because I don't want to confuse you too much, but there are sevenths on there. If I were going to be absolutely correct, I'd say one at six, minor six, seven, minor two, seven. One more. I love it. You hear that chord? Have you ever heard that? I mean, that just makes me think of Elton John. But even more than that, it makes me think of Carol King. Carol King used these chords all the time, and she's one of, she influenced so many people. Carol King. 
um, Elton John, Billy Joel were both influenced by her. Incredible songwriter, Carol, Carol King. But she used this chord, and we're going to talk about what it is because then you can use it in your music. You know what? You could write a song right now because you know a couple of chords. You could write a song. You could play it a little slower, a little faster, or change the order. Do it in a different order. Just need a couple of chords. Write a song. All right, so this last one, remember we're not using the flats. D and then E, G, C on top. Whoops. <laughs> You're like, what are we doing? Uh, there we go. E, G, C on top, D on the bass. Okay, so what is that? Hmm, that sounds interesting. So it's E, G, C. That's easy enough. That's a C chord, right? C, E, G, just in an inversion. If it's in root position, the C's on the bass, but if you play it with E on the, on the bass, it's still a C chord, but it's an inversion of it. It's the first inversion of that C chord. I could play it this way, too. That's called second inversion. First inversion, root position. If I go one more time, I'm back to root position. Three notes, three different ways to play it. Okay. So the bass is a D. So this is where... That D doesn't really fit in the chord, okay? It's not a seventh because it'd be C, E, G, B. Um, it, when you have this on the bottom like this and you have this sound, okay? That's one of those chords. Have you ever seen a chord written where it looks like a fraction, like you got C on the top and then a line, and then it looks like D is the, the denominator and C is the numerator? This is one of those chords, and it. whenever you hear it, you'll, ah, oh, that's what that is. You'll start to identify it by sound. It's a C chord over a D bass. Okay? So the D is not actually considered part of the chord. It's like a different chord underneath it mixed in. It's like C over top of a D bass. Okay? How would you write that? Four over five. It's called four over five. And this is what it sounds like. Here it is. Come on. Listen to it. It's a chord that's really neat to use right before you go back to the one chord. So it's the C chord is the what chord? If you're in the key of G, well, you count up. One, two, three, four. G, A, B, C. One, two, three, four. And that gives us our major four chord. In a major key, the four chord is going to be major, just like the one chord was a major chord. All right, if you're wondering the difference between major and minor, major sounds happy. Minor sounds happy, sad. And... That middle note of the chord determines whether it's major or minor. Happy, sad. I can do it on any chord. Happy, sad. When I lower it in its lowered position, it doesn't matter if it's a black key or white key. Imagine if it's lowered or not. If it's lowered, it's in a sad state. Raised, it's in a major state. Okay? <clears throat> so we have C major over that D bass, and that's called 4 over 5 because D is the 5. D is the five chord. G is one. One, two, three, four, five. So we have four over five. Those are our four chords. One, six, minor six, seven, minor two, seven, four over five. And we could just repeat that. Listen to this. try to play with uh, Crystal Gale on on this song on, on an album or something it's not going to sound right because she's not doing it she's doing it in the flat key now I'm going to show you something really cool with the flats okay so um, I have I've been playing it in G if I make everything flat now I just go down a half step and you may think well why would crystals do that to all the musicians make them play in all those flats make them play in six flats um, instead of just playing in the key of G because of her voice. This key fits her voice to a T for this song, and that's why they used it. <laughs> okay? So if I flat everything, look at that. I already automatically, now I can play in another key. I can play the same chord progression, the same functions of the chord chords in the key of G flat, which is also called the key of F sharp. F sharp and G flat are the same note. But look, it's still the same thing. Um, even though now the chord's called G flat, 
the function of the chord does not change. It's still a 1-6 in the key of G flat, a 1 at 6. This is still a minor 6 7 in the key of G flat because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's an E flat minor 7. Here's one I'll throw you from a loop. A, I'll throw you for a loop. A flat minor 7. It's one you don't play every day. A flat, C flat. Who plays C flat all the time? Well, there it is. And now you see why we write C flat instead of B. Because if you wrote a B, it wouldn't look like the a chord on paper. Because a chord's got to go <clears throat> C E G D F A E G B F A C G B D A C E A C E B D F. It's got to look like that. It's got to look like a chord as far as the letters go. And if I put B instead of a C, then all of a sudden it's a weird thing that doesn't make any sense. E G C doesn't make a sense though because it, that makes sense because it's a uh, part of a C chord or A C E G <clears throat> makes sense. All right, so that's why we write C flat. In C flat, you're just playing a a white key because it's a half step down. And I, I know it's weird, but that's what you do there. Okay, so if you play this in all flats, and you're ready to go. There's a four over five in the key of G flat. The four chord is C flat. I know that's weird. One, two, three, four, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat. And the five chord, the five is the D flat in the bass. So one, six, two, four over five, and you do it again. And then you say, well, what's that? I can't remember what that is. That's the... the piano part that goes on in that song on the top that um, we will learn on the website. If you're actually interested in learning the song, we can do that on the, the website. We'll learn the whole thing. But I, I like to use these songs to give you some theory lessons, okay? So um, I'm going to leave it at that and hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, please put a comment if you're curious about some theory questions. I'd I love to kind of get in. I love theory. I love looking at chords. It's all very interesting to me. All right. So you get past that place where it's confusing and it starts to be very interesting. That's what's really fun. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you later.